Yeah, th- those are some heavy, heavy thoughts. And uh, I, I can't say that, um, you know, while I haven't thought about closing or throwing the towel, but we hit robot bumps every day. And, I'm, you know, some days you're just tired and you just, man, is it worth it? Uh, oh, am I going to how am I going to pay bills this week? Uh, can we pay? Can we cover payroll? Um, whatever your situation is, those are some heavy things to think about. Welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business with your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magwell. Well, welcome to the Spiro Podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business. Uh, Spiro is a software platform designed to really manage and grow and scale your real estate media business. I'm Craig Magram, host of the Spiro Podcast, and with me every week, and uh, glad to do this with him, our owner, our founder, and co-host of the Spiro Podcast, Todd Kivimaki. How's it going, Todd? Yeah, hey, it's it's great, Craig. Hey, thank you for that warm introduction. Great to be here. Uh, thank you all. This was a uh, a busy week for us, so thank you mm-hmm. for all the feedback and all the questions that you guys a- asked. Um, so just thank you for communicating. It's fun to hear from you guys out there on the road. Uh, you know, one of one of the individuals said I drove 15 miles past where I was going to listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I just full disclaimer, that's not our intention. So right. <laughs> we're, we're not always that captivating that you actually forget where you're going. We're really right. only good once or twice. So that happened to be one of those times. But anyways, regardless, yeah. it's fun to hear from all of you. Yeah, I'm just glad he wasn't on his way to a uh, an actual appointment and it was at the end of his day. So it was, he just missed getting home on time. <laughs> that was great. I laughed when I when I saw that email. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so, OK, this week's topic, Todd and I were, were talking before the podcast. Um, I, I think this is going to be a, a tougher one um, to, to talk about because I – in the past week, Todd, I, I was looking at some of the, the Facebook real estate media groups and mm-hmm. um, I, I ran across this post that kind of made my heart sink a little bit and, and break for the, this, this person. Um, but th- it's kind of a weighty question um, and, and it's hard because it's a real life situation that at some point, I think all of us maybe are tempted to think or have to deal with. And it's the question of, do I throw in the towel? You know, I'm having trouble getting this business going and having enough cash flow to support myself, to support my family. And it's just not taken off. Do I throw in the towel and go back to my my nine to five? And like I said, when I when I read that, my heart kind of broke because when you start a new business, you're taking a huge, huge risk. And mm-hmm. it, it's a big step of faith. And I'm I'm kind of a conservative personality and I'm not a risk taker. And I just remember that apprehension and anxiety I felt when I made that switch and, and went out on my own and realizing the pressure of I've got a family to support. And man, at any time, this could just all implode. Um, so that's the topic for this week. Um, how do we handle the question of when when and if to throw in the towel on our business? Yeah, th- those are some heavy, <laughs> heavy thoughts. And uh, I, I can't say that, um, you know, while I haven't thought about closing or throwing the towel, but we hit robot bumps every day. And, I'm, you know, some days you're just tired and you just, man, is it worth it? Yeah. Uh, oh, am I going to how am I going to pay bills this week? Uh, can we pay? Can we cover payroll? Um, whatever your situation is, those are some heavy things to think about. It doesn't help right now. Market da- is down twenty percent. You know, yeah. pinning your pinning your area. Uh, rates are through the roof compared to what they were a year ago. Historically, they're they're still great. And quite hmm. honestly, where they're at right now is a good spot for the real estate market. Um, most people aren't going to move if you're in a rate of two and a half percent. Why would you move to a house? That's going to be at six and a half percent. You know, those are all things you're hearing all this in the news. You know, as you scroll through your time, you know, through a timeline or through your news articles, uh, you're hearing your realtors say it. Yeah. But the thing is, is that is something that you can't control. You just absolutely can't control it. I remember mm. the, I remember the highs of 06 and 07 and the lows of 08, 9, 10, 11, and 12. <laughs> it, it just there was nothing that I could do and there's nothing you can do to control interest rates. 
You can call everybody you want and you can write as many letters as you want. And I hate to tell you, no one's going to listen to you. <laughs> the, the Fed's not going to get your letter and say, oh, yeah, okay, Todd here. Oh, he thinks we should take interest rates lower. No, <laughs> you can't control any of that. The only thing you can control is the messaging that you put into your head. Uh, I, I, I listened to an individual called, his name's John Acuff, and he has a book called Soundtracks. And it is about the soundtrack that you play in your mind. Hmm. And I think, and, and um, I, I don't have it off the top of my head. I, I would suggest, he's got a great podcast too. I would suggest you grab his book and read it. But the studies that he did and that some um, research institutes did show that most of our thoughts every day are in that negative zone of things that we can't control or things that are only going to bring us down lower. Uh, and, and for those of you that don't know how your brain works, most of your thoughts are subconscious thoughts. Yeah. So if you, for every one conscious thought that you think, there's probably a million subconscious yeah. thoughts. Um, and, and don't quote me on the number, but it is literally that <laughs> big of a, it is literally that big of a difference. I, I, you know, your subconscious mind or your left brain is incredible with what it can do. So I would just encourage you that if, if you are in that spot right now where you're, you, excuse the term, but you're a Debbie Downer right now hmm. and you're like, oh man, I didn't get as many shoots as I wanted to. I didn't make as much money. Uh, the market, oh, the market's terrible. I, I would just really encourage you to change your soundtrack hmm. and to change your soundtrack to thoughts that you can control. So, um, can, can I pop in real quick on there? Yeah, please. Um, it, it, I know not everybody comes from a, a faith background or, or, or has a faith that they're walk, they're walking in and this isn't meant to proselytize or anything, but, um, it, it, as a follower of Jesus, I, you know, I read the Bible on a regular, on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. there's, there's a verse that has always stuck out to me. And I, I forget what, what book and chapter and verse it is, but it's, it says this as a, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So mm -hmm. just to, to back up what you just said of that, changing that soundtrack. Yeah. We've, we've got to see ourselves in a, in a different light to be able to change our thinking and in, in our mind and how we view the world around us, how we view our business, how we view our, our business relationships. So it, yeah, just, mm -hmm. just wanted to reinforce that. Yeah, for sure. That, that is uh, just a great point, Craig. And it's, uh, you know, I think it's very wise and, and something for you to consider. So, uh, yeah. okay. So let's get back to, to let, let me, let me turn more towards the practical. So you have those thoughts right now and you're thinking, Hey, I'm, I'm you're, you're just really negative about the idea of working for yourself. You know, business business was good when you started. You were a new hmm. entity out there in the market. You gained some momentum, um, and now you've kind of hit a plateau. That's okay, and that's normal. That, that's business. As I look back over Well, there was over the history of Wow, uh, our real estate media company. There was some years that we grew forty percent, hmm. like forty percent. Like we'd hit a big brokerage deal and our graphs would just skyrocket exponentially <laughs> up 40%. Well, as you grow, it is harder to grow 40%. You know, right. when we did, when we did a half a million dollars in revenue or revenue or a million dollars in revenue was a lot, it was easier to grow 40%. You know, I think some of those years we probably did one or two or 300,000 in revenue. When you do more revenue, when you do $3 million in revenue and above four or five, you know, whatever it is, whatever you're doing right now, insert your number, it becomes harder to grow uh, the more you're in business. And especially, are you focused on it? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that would be one question is, is, is if it grows your problem, are you focused on it? Um, you know, I have a few, a few points here to keep back on track in, in my preparation um, for this. I think one question that you should ask yourself is, uh, what do you want to become? You know, hmm. why did you go back and revisit? And this is something I'm doing right now because we're revisiting our, um, our core values, our vision, our mission, all those statements. And quite honestly, I, I hate those things more than anybody else out there. I, I really do, but I, I know <laughs> I, I have you. to work on them. <laughs> 
I, I love I your Craig. transparency. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just do. But it's important because if you don't think about it, it's like yeah. so I work with a coach. I work with a couple different coaches. And I was I was in with Dave yesterday and he said, well, he's like, well, the vision, what do you want it to be? And, and he was kind of spitballing these things. We've worked together for quite some time. And um, I was like, oh, I just had this mental block. And he's like, OK, hey. well, what what were you in the past? OK, why did you start this business? They, those were happy thoughts. Hmm. Okay, do you see what, I, see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to get yeah. you connected back to the happy thoughts. So why did you start this business? You were excited at some point about what your real estate media company could be. I mean, for me, I remember, it, and Craig, it'd be, it'd be cool to hear what you, what you remember too. I yeah. remember I was a college student and I remember I was shooting whatever I could, weddings, I was shooting families, um, photo and video. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, like I would do the math on my calculator. I could do this many shoots, a hundred shoots a month, a thousand shoots a month. What if I, you know, what if we did uh, 2000 shoots a month, whatever it may be. Those were the days that I was super excited about what WOW Video Tours, our real estate media company, could be. Uh, yeah. So I would encourage you, one, to visit those. Craig, what about you? You know, I know you you were transparent at the beginning. You said, hey, you know, I, I and I remember having these conversations with you and you're like, I, I was hesitant to take this leap of faith. But yeah. there was something that excited you, Craig, when you were like, I'm going to start my own business. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. <laughs> I, I worked in uh, Christian radio for almost 20 years and financially that that's a struggle. It's, you know, it wasn't a huge, um, a, a huge way to su support your family. And I, I enjoyed the work I was doing, but honestly I had burned out and photography is just something that I had always wanted to learn, always wanted to do. I love still life. Um, you know, I, obviously I knew you, Todd, I knew the business that you had. And I thought, you know, real estate photography and, and video is something I, I would probably enjoy doing because it, it is still life. And I, I actually, I, I prayed a prayer. I, I'm just going to be, again, transparent here. This, this is just my story. It's not everybody's story. But there, there was a couple of things I was wrestling with. with. One, I wasn't enjoying what I was doing anymore. And I, I had burned out. Um, number two, I've always admired tradespeople carpenters, electricians, pipe fitters, um, you know, anybody that's working with their hands because they're physically creating something, something, a tangible good that is of real value to somebody because all these things are needed and they make a decent living doing that. They, they work hard. And I'm like, God, would you give me something like a, a tradesperson, something I can create with my hands. Cause I'm not a handy person. I I'm terrible with home, home repairs, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I enjoyed photography and I'm like, would you give me something tangible that I can create that would be of value to somebody else that I can sell with a clear conscience, knowing that this really is going to help somebody and that I can support my family on. And the idea for this, a real estate media business came into mind. I, you know, you popped into my mind, what you were doing. I'm like, I would love that. I would love to do that and create that and be able to offer that to other people to help them build their real estate business and to help sell homes. And I would, I would enjoy that work. And I, knowing the success of wild video tours, I'm like, I think I could make a go of this. And so th I made that part-time, you know, I, I started part-time. I didn't quit my job immediately and, and just slowly saw it start to grow. And I got excited and realized there's potential for this. And that's when I took that, that step of faith and that, that leap of faith. I was the most terrifying moment of my <laughs> life, Todd, <laughs> but it, I, it grew. Yeah. And I remember some of those conversations, Craig, and it, it was, yeah. it was a pleasure to be a part of because I got the excitement, but also the kind of anxiety and, and the, and the <laughs> nervousness about it. And, and yeah. that's natural. I mean, that as humans, that's the way our bodies are created. I mean, they're created sure you have a fight or flight instinct. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you really have a fight or flight instinct because of a, you know, a bear or a lion's chasing you, you should kick in and get adrenaline. Um, <laughs> and there's good, there's really good times that your body should use it. And then there's times that it becomes paralyzing as well. Right. Um, right. But it was really neat to be a part of those conversations. So you listeners out there, I would encourage you go back and revisit that. You know, that's kind of like yeah. your dating. That's your dating period. You know, go back <laughs> to those days of why did I start this thing? And then ask yourself, 
and and I would do this with a blank piece of paper in front of you is what do you want to become? Hmm. And and start writing. What do you want to become? And let yourself really, whatever it may be, you might want to be the, the most high end, uh, the most volume, um, the best customer service. But what, what do you want to become? The, the, the photographer that gives back, uh, the photographer mm. that connects and unites, whatever it is, write that down. If you, if you aren't writing these visions and goals down, you just simply... I think the success of achieving them is, is very, very small. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important to get those things down. And then next, really, you need to think about, uh, you know, one thing to think about is that if one year from now, you'll be in the same spot if you don't change. So clearly you're on you're there's something that you're not happy about. You know, Craig, you had some good points on here. I had a lower volume than past year or two. Uh, there's more real estate companies, more real estate media companies in the market. Uh, yeah. Realtors are looking for the cheapest price. Brokerages are bringing it in-house. Um, there's large companies in my area. Um, you know, those are all variables, again, that you can't control, but you can do something about them. But if you don't do anything about them, you're going to be in the same spot. You are right. one year, two years, five years as you are today. So I, yeah. I think it's important to get some of those thoughts down. It, the, the, one, the one way I, I think about it, I, I learned this. I, I worked at a, a place called Cherry Street Mission in downtown Toledo a couple of years ago. And our executive director, um, in, in providing us training and who we were serving, and it was people experiencing homelessness, he's, in, in talking about who we were serving, he said, People will not change. You will not change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Mm -hmm. So you really have to look at your pain threshold. Is it more painful to, to change right now or is it more painful to stay the same? And when you realize the, the pain threshold in, that you've crossed it by staying the same, that's when you, you've got to make that change. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so true, Craig. I, I just love that. And I think that really resonates, um, at least with me. So, so I, I thought about a few action steps today and I will be full disclosure. Uh, a lot of these things are not mine. And this is from a coach that I work with. His name's Austin Chevron. And he is a, he has a coaching company. He's actually a real estate agent or, or has a real estate brokerage uh, in, in Northeast Indiana. And um, his coaching company is called Chevron Coaching. That's with an I, Chevron. Uh, feel free to look him up. I participate in these every Tuesday. And like I said, I, I have another coach that comes into the office and, and his name's Dave and works with me. Uh, but these are, these are some tips from Austin. And I wanted to share them with you because he is, uh, you know, he just gave them to us. And I think they're really important. So uh, say 23 is going to be the year that you bet on yourself. Okay. So you, you change your thinking. Let's one, change your soundtrack and get out of those negative thoughts. Get excited about why you started and what you're going to do. Okay. What is 23 going to be? What's your vision? Now, Let's bet on yourself, okay? Let's do it. Let's bet on ourselves. You came into this industry for some reason, okay? Mm -hmm. Either you had a nine to five you didn't like, you were really energized about what you could create, how you could grow your business. Maybe you like the idea of managing a team, whatever it is, let's bet on yourself in 23. So the first thing is that he would suggest is upgrade your people, okay? So mm -hmm. who are the people that you surround yourself with, are they good for you? Are they bad for you? Do they help feed those negative thoughts into your head? Okay, we need to upgrade them if they do. You need to cut them out of your life, get away from them, and surround right. yourself with people that want to see you succeed. Right. And in every community, there's, there's these groups. Maybe you have some friends that you need to take the lunch. You need to be around a lot more. There's networking groups. There's small business groups. Does your chamber have something? Your local board of realtors, get around those people and find the people that are betting on themselves in 23 and that are betting on themselves in 24 and 25 and surround yourself with those people. You've got to have a positive influence. You've got to have a support system around you that will help you grow and that wants you to succeed. So step one is upgrade your people. 
Mm, good stuff. Step two is upgrade your systems and your skills. Okay, so where did you have gaps at in 22? What is a pain point? Maybe it's painful for you to schedule. Maybe it was painful for you to get your editing back from your editors. Uh, whatever it is, you what what are some cracks that you have in your shell that you need to fix with systems and skills? Maybe you need to become a better photographer or videographer. Whatever it is, let's upgrade those systems and let's fix those, okay? You can probably do a lot of them with processes and procedures. What should happen every time? Document, write it down. What should you do, okay? If, if client service or follow-up is tough, then let's create the to-do list of what needs to happen after every shoot, okay? Whatever it is, but you should think about upgrading your systems and skills. You always wanna get better. You always wanna make sure that you're giving a good service to others. Right. Step number three, uh, he, as he would say, is get a guide. Okay, so who is going to guide you? Uh, you know, he says, who is your Mr. Miyagi? I'll use his phrase. <laughs> uh, you know, you need a Mr. Miyagi. Uh, you can't do this alone, and you shouldn't feel as though you have to do it alone. Now, I will tell you, uh, the money, this will be a very, this will be a point to where you go and you look to hire a coach. Um, quite honestly, the Chevron coaching, it's very affordable. Uh, it's group mm. coaching. It's not private coaching. Um, if you've never paid for a coach before, you can expect to pay between two to $600 an hour, depending who your coach is. Okay. Just, just as a, a, a blanket statement out there, mm -hmm. that might be very shocking to some of you. Okay. 500 bucks a week. I'm going to talk to them three, you know, three or four times a month. How am I going to do that? Mm. Well, I bet you have purchased some items or you have credit card debt of things that you don't really need. Okay. I'm just going to be transparent today. I'm typically okay. not, I'm typically, I'm an SI personality, but y'all out there that are eating out every day or do, do you have a bad habit? Do you drink? Do you smoke? You need to stop that. Hmm. Put that money. Do you, do you buy, what do you buy? Are you a gear addict? Okay. Me too. I, who yeah. who doesn't love a new gearbox, a B&H box showing up? I mean, I can smell the thing when the mailman's a mile down the road. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's coming in today. Okay, just stop it. You need to reallocate that money into your guide, into your coach. And, and it's an investment in yourself. Right. It really is. I, 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 and, and I, I'm not endorsed by any of these individuals. And I, you know, I won't even tell you how you can get Dave, my coach, to coach for you because I, I, you know, you go find your own Dave. Um, they're mm -hmm. out there. There's lots of coaches out there, but you need to invest in yourself. You need to make sure that you are pouring into yourself because one thing to remember is you're going to learn from their mistakes. They've been there and done that. They can help you just jump over many potholes in the road. Uh, you know, one of our missions here with this podcast as well, like, can I save you with all the stupid things that I did? <laughs> okay. Use me. Email me. If, you, if you're if you in this spot, email me. Hello at Spiro.media. I've probably made the most dumb mistakes anyone out there in this industry. I've, I've done this since 2006. Trust me, if I could screw it up, I screwed it up. If you got a question, <laughs> email it to me. I'll be happy to have a quick call with you. I'll be happy to type you back a response, but you need to find someone to guide you because yeah. you shouldn't do it on your own. Uh, also, and uh, um, also, my fourth step, and then I'll, and then, and then, Craig, we can. I, I know I'm going a little long here, but um, invest in yourself. Okay, so that's that's a little bit different than getting a guy, but investing yourself is reading. How many of you read out there? I will no. admit that I am not the like I don't desire to go home and read at the end of the day. Uh, I start every day off. I read the Bible every morning. I'm in a good routine. I eat, drink my smoothie, read the Bible. But I need to get a better routine for myself. This is one of my goals in 23 to read at home. It's crazy. Kids are everywhere. There's basketball practice. It seems like <laughs> literally 17 times a week. How do you have basketball practice 17 times a week? There's only five days in a week or seven <laughs> days. And, you know, there's two days in the weekend. How are we doing this? But and, but find time, invest in yourself, read, podcast, um, 
different events that you can go to. Uh, I, I believe, um, I can't think of the author that said it now, but you can't give what you don't have. That really set with me. Like you cannot give what you don't have. If you're not pouring into yourself and you don't have this information, you can't give it out to your company, to your clients, to your employees. So I would okay. highly suggest that you begin to get in the routine of reading. Think of that, you get a $20 book, 20, you know, 15 to 25 dollar book, you just stole a whole world, a whole lifetime of information from that author. Like, yeah. you know, they probably worked their whole lifetime to put that information in that book. You get it for 20 bucks. Like what's better <laughs> than that? So, right. so yeah, that, those are my, you know, up, upgrade the people, your processes and skills, systems and skills, get a guide and invest in yourself. Can I add one more thing to the invest in yourself? Yes, I'm please. Gonna, I'm going to convict myself on this exercise, physical activity. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have struggled with depression in the past and, and with anxiety. And it's usually, you know, during the winter, you know, here in Northwest Ohio, it's cloudy. There's no sun. You know, mm -hmm. there's that seasonal disorder, whatever it's called. And a lack of activity will lower those those good brain chemicals and send mm -hmm. you into a, into a spiral. And I've struggled with that. And right now I'm not exercising and I should be. And I, I know because I've experienced it, the times I have started dragging my sorry butt out of bed at 4.30, <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning, which I'm a morning person, but even for me, that's painful. Um, when, when I get back to, to you know working out at least three times a week, there is a dopamine release that you mm -hmm. you're tired, but you feel good. And the rest of the day, my mind is clear. It's sharper. I'm not as likely to uh, get sucked down in, into negative feelings. Exercise is important. And darn it, now that it's on a podcast, Todd, I've got to start now <laughs> because somebody's going to email us and say, hey, Craig, are you working out? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, somebody be that person. That's so great. Somebody be Craig's Thanks. accountability person. E Craig yeah. at Spiro.media. Email him Thanks, at 430. <laughs> hey, did you work out? <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's been in the back of my mind. It's like, I really got to get back to this. Not, I'm actually in a pretty good state of mind right now, but regardless, I, I need to get back to that. I got weight. I got to lose and I want to feel better. I'm going to be shooting uh, more photos. I want to have the energy I need to, to, to shoot during, during a day, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, work out, exercise your body and, and it's going to have just good all around benefits for you as you invest in yourself. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that Craig, because I truly believe in uh, the power of investing in your health. It's yep. one of those things that when you have it, we kind of take it for granted, but when you don't have good health, right. It is truly, uh, you know, it it, it it will change your, you know, you won't be able to do what you used to be able to do. So yeah. exercising also, I'm a big proponent and thanks to my wife, she's done this, but are you eating clean food? Are you eating, <laughs> and, you know, this could be a podcast itself, uh, you know, the amount of money that we spend as a family at home and I've got three young kids and I've got three young kids and I, and I'm a tall, so I'm a tall guy. So I'm trying to grow like six, 10 boys, you know? So like I've got kids that are wanting to eat a ton. And I remember just standing <laughs> at the refrigerator when I was in high school, like I'd literally eat everything in sight. Um, and the, until it was all gone. Uh, so I feel you, if you have kids out there, trust me, I feel you yeah. on food costs, but we buy very clean, very healthy food. And we look at what we, we don't buy sugar as my, I mean, I love, I, I love sugar. I love chocolate. I love anything like that. We just don't buy it because I'll eat it. It's not in the mm -hmm. house. Um, so w I have to do things like that. Like I have to just not have it in the house because I'm a weak person. Like my self-control, like that's in there. I'm like, oh man, that's chocolate covered almonds. Like, yeah. oh. And <laughs> so, so yeah, invest in yourself right. and your health as well. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, yeah. So if, if you're, at that point right now where you're, you're dealing with that question of, you know, the finances just aren't coming in. Do I throw in the towel, you know, take, take these steps that Todd has shared with you. And, and you might be at a point where maybe you do have to go and get another job to help supplement in income, but go back to that vision you had and don't, don't, my takeaway, Todd is don't give up because you started it for a reason. Mm hmm. And yeah. you don't, you don't want to be stuck with losing that dream and then living with regret. So there, yeah. it might be a challenging time, but man, go just keep, keep at it. Keep at it. 
Yeah, one of our core values at WOWS, uh, it, it talks about hard work. And I always say, if it was easy, then everybody would do it. What right. you're trying to do is not easy. So pat yourself on the back. Give yourself some yeah. credit for that. You took the leap of faith. Let's build on positive and let's continue that momentum forward and then find some action plans, find a guide, uh, put some good things into your brain with a book, fix your processes, your systems, uh, your skills, and, um, you know, really bet on yourself for 23. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully this... Yeah, sorry, Craig. I want to give a quick, just if you are looking, um, and I I don't know if, I I know he's accepting new uh, people into his coaching, um, his his coaching platform. It's on Tuesday mornings. uh, I believe it's at 11 a.m. Eastern, but it is, it is called Chevron Coaching. Um, I didn't even ask him for this, so I'll ask for forgiveness uh, (laughs) over, over permission on this, but I do find it valuable. It's a room full of realtors and then other adjacent companies. There's vendors in there, uh, mortgage titled. uh, I'm in there as a photographer uh, and it's people all the way across. It's across the U.S. So it's just not in, in, in Indiana or for Ohio. So it's across the U.S. I do get a lot of value out of that. I don't get any kickback from him. He's not paying me to say this. Um, Mm -hmm. He's just earned it over the years of being good to me. And I truly believe in what he's saying. And I think um, it's a lot of mindset. So it's Chevron, C-H-E-V-I-R-O-N coaching. Just give it a quick search. I do know he's got, uh, his name's Dr. Abelson coming up. And I believe he's got a free session in early March that you could probably join in and see what it's all about. Um, Dr. Abelson is one of the leading world authorities on your disc test personality profiles. Um, so I've had the pleasure to hear him speak once before and he's on again. And I believe, uh, at least I'll ask a favor for Austin if needed. I, I believe you can get into that and sample that um, before you you buy anything. And again, no pressure from me. We're not endorsed mm-hmm. by it, but find something out there. If it's not, you know, your, find your Mr. Miyagi out there. Uh, and if you need help, give me a, get, sh- shoot me an email and I'll, I'll send you a link. And, and something else, to, another resource to consider, Todd, especially if you're coming from a, like, say, a, a Christian faith background, um, a group I was involved in, in was called Truth at Work. It's a, a, a Christian business roundtable. There, there's usually 10 to 12 individuals, um, it, and it really acts as your, your personal board of directors for business issues, uh, personal issues that you might be dealing with, and spiritual issues. Um, mm. Everything from a, a biblical standpoint, and you can check that out. Again, I'm not being <laughs> paid for this either, but it was a powerful group in my life. Um, just go to truthatwork.org, I believe it is, truthatwork.org. Uh, uh, but an amazing organization and other business leaders that you can draw from their experience on um, and, and just get some really, really good advice. Oh, love that. Thank you, Craig, for that. Yeah. Hey, we want to encourage you. If you're that person out there and you're having those thoughts, we just want to encourage you. Uh, we want to, uh, you know, be a good support system for you. You can do this. Uh, you know, you have started this for a reason. Find that passion again. You can do it. Just yeah. one small little step at a time. Don't beat yourself up and just keep moving forward. So I would really just encourage you uh, to think positive and, and, and use that energy to move forward and up and not backwards and down. So. For those of you that are new to the podcast, thank you for listening. Uh, For those of you coming back again, we just appreciate you guys. And again, it was great to hear from all of you this week. We love to hear from you. Please email us, hello at spiro.media. Yeah, any questions, anything that you have that you want to have answered. Like I said, I pretty much screwed everything up with real estate media. So (laughs) email me and I'll tell you what not to do. Uh, Also, if you would love to get a a demo or get into Spiro, uh, it is the management software software platform that we created for WOW Video Tours uh, to manage and deliver, you know, the 12,000 plus shoots that we do a year. Uh, Also, shoot me an email, hello at Spiro.media. Would love to do a demo with you or guide you through that. Uh, One exciting thing in the middle of February, we do have our task management and to do workflows coming out. So very powerful where it integrates not only every to do that you have on a service on a job, Uh, Also, an editor portal, uh, just lots of amazing things coming up. Editor queues where you can assign multiple flows. Uh, This one I'm excited about. This one will save you time. This one will allow you to to, to be at peace saying, oh, my goodness, I know everything (laughs) that needs done and I know who's doing it. So back there, when we talked about upgrading your your 
processes and systems. If you don't feel like if you're like, oh my goodness, who's editing, who's doing this, who's QCing, what needs done, this will do it for you. So shoot me an email. Yeah. I'd love to do a demo for, with you. Yeah. And you can also check it out at our website at Spiro.media as well. Well, Todd, that's going to wrap things up. Uh, again, we just we hope this was an encouragement to you. Um, you know, the title might have been a little bit of clickbait, but that no, it's it's a real question that that you might be struggling with is do I throw in the towel? And we're, we're saying just keep going for it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget, you can listen to the podcast. You can get it on any of the major uh, podcast platforms out there. It's great to listen to in between shoots if you're still out there in the field. Uh, and, and conversely, if you're listening to it, but you want to check it out on YouTube, uh, just search us out, um, youtube.com forward slash at Spiro podcast and uh, leave a comment. We'd, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section on YouTube as well. Um, we just want to uh, thank you again for taking some time to to listen, uh, to invest in yourself. Th this is meant to build you up, to, to give you tools to have a successful business. Um, so thank you for listening, making that time. Uh, just enjoy the blessings that you've been given and take a breath. You deserve it. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro Podcast, Managing Your Real Estate Photography and Videography Business. This is a production of Spiro and WOW Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.